Hi, everybody. It's Julie for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today, I'm going to be playing with the Distress Oxide Sprays. That's right. They come in a spray format, not just an ink pad. And I'm also going to be doing uh, some masking. And I love to use Ink and Dinka Do masking sheets uh, when I have to do any blending over the top because these have repositionable stick them all over the entire backside. And I'm going to die cut the Mondo Gerbera Daisy there from a piece of this masking sheet and then peel the backing away. It's really easy to work with. And I love the fact that it has all over stick them. Like if you use a post it note, you know, the typical post-it notes, they only have stick them along that top edge. And then you have to worry about making sure the bottom edge stays down while you're going over the top of it. And I don't like worrying about that. So I really prefer using these masking sheets for techniques like this. Now I've got my work surface protected with some uh, white typing paper. And then I've got a glove on to keep my hands semi-clean. <laughs> Because you know me, I don't like getting stuff on my hands. I'm going to shake the bottles from side to side really good to get it mixed up. If you shake up and down aggressively, it can sometimes leak out the nozzle. I'm just saying. So side to side if you want to keep it from kind of leaking out the nozzle. Okay? Now, I'm going to spray some water over the top of these three colors that I'm working with. And then I have an ink blending tool. And I have a different color foam on the end of the blending tool for every color I'm going to be working with. And I'll have those colors listed down below. And once I added the water and I started blending this over the top onto the watercolor paper, I was really astonished by how easily that blending tool glides across the paper. There was virtually no resistance um, at all. And so I have tendonitis in my right arm. And so blending is always a challenge for me. It really wears out my arm. But this was like, wow. I'm When I say glide, I really literally mean that blending tool is going to glide across the surface of the paper, which is pretty cool. And um, I really wasn't sure at first how well this was going to work. <laughs> so this was like, okay, I'm taking a chance here and I'm winging it. And lo and behold, I was really thrilled with how easy it was for me to blend these colors. Now, I started out with fossilized... Oh, no, I started out with peeled paint, and then I came in with the fossilized amber. And then last but not least, I'm going to come in with the Mermaid Lagoon. Now, this looks like a primary blue there on the Teflon craft sheet, but it's actually kind of an deep, deep aqua-hued blue. And that really, sh that really shines and comes out when you start blending it here on the paper. So don't be uh, fooled by what you see there on the craft sheet itself. So hopefully that the camera is picking up how pretty this color is. It's just very, like, almost teal colored. So once I'm done adding and blending all my colors, and I did not want a perfect blend, I don't, I really don't mind having the depth and dimension that those edges where the colors meet kind of create. I just like it. It's kind of artsy to me. So I decided to just stop, you know, I wasn't going to keep blending over the top, although I could have to get a totally smooth blend, but I just liked how it looked. It looks very painterly, even though I didn't even use a paintbrush. So now I'm going to put that on a clipboard and grab my heat gun. And I'm sorry that the heat gun was in the camera the whole time. But basically what I'm doing is heating this and drying it. And then once it's dry, I'm going to get much better results when I start um, spattering it with water. Now, my masking paper did start to come up from the heat. It was overheating it, and that made the adhesive kind of deactivate, and it started curling up from the edges. And that's okay. I just kind of pressed it back down into place. And then I'm going to take the nozzle and pull that out and use the tube there from the nozzle in my Nouveau water mister and go ahead and just put some droplets over the top of that. And then you could take a paper towel and blot it, but that cool oxidation effect really comes into play when you start to allow it to dry. And I didn't have time to sit around and let it air dry on its own. So, of course, the girl who's always in a hurry grabbed her heat gun and just heated it back up. And I repeated this process twice because I really wanted uh, even more uh, spatter. I kind of wanted to check out how it looked and then I put the mask back in place just to kind of protect that area while I was putting more water droplets on there. And so here I go. I'm just going to continue in this pattern of adding more droplets and creating even more of that oxidized effect. And it works the best when the ink there on the surface, the spray is dry and then you just come back in and 
sprinkle your water. And at first you don't really see it. It doesn't look like much. And then when you start to heat it up with the heat gun, that's when that oxidizing starts to really take hold. So it's very subtle here because I've diluted the sprays with a little bit of water, which also, you know, changes the formulation of the oxide spray. But I was loving the end result. So now I'm going to remove the mask. I'm all done with that. And it's pretty much... Uh, I need to just throw it away because of what the way I used it with the oxide sprays, it pretty much <laughs> saturated it. And uh, I'm not going to probably be able to use it again, so I'm going to toss it. Now, I've grabbed the actual Mondo Gerbera stamp here, and I mounted it. What I didn't realize is there was still some ink residue. I didn't clean it off properly the last time I used it, and I got some residue there on my beautifully masked area. I was so mad about this. But... I gave it a thought and realized, you know, I got nothing to lose by grabbing my sand eraser and sanding that away and using my uh, Swiffer Sweeper brush by Tonic, and it cleaned it up. I was like, yes, I do not have to start over. I can keep going. So now I can go ahead and take some Nocturne VersaFine uh, ink and go ahead and stamp that down. Now, because this is watercolor paper... It's a rough texture, even though I'm working on the smoother side. So to get a real nice, uh, clean, crisp, and even impression, I may have to ink it and stamp it in the exact same spot two or three times. But it's all good because I'm using a misty stamp positioning tool. So once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and embellish it by die cutting the words hi and friend from some black cardstock. And those are in the Mondo Gerbera die set. And to apply this to my finished card, I just trimmed off the edges and mounted that watercolor panel to a standard A2 card base made from Nina Solar White. I'm going to use the Zig two-way glue pen here to apply some adhesive all over to the back of my die cut letters. They're pretty delicate, but I find that for me in the long run, this Zig two-way glue pen works pretty spiffy for gluing down my finer detailed die cut shapes. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I've got a nice coating of this two-way glue there. And of course, I got my tweezers. Um, I didn't want to do any uh, gymnastics there with my arms, so I had to reposition it there in my tweezers. But I used the tweezers to hold it down and then the tweezers to go ahead and mount it into place because I can't really see when my fingers get in the way. And just go ahead and also mount the word die. Now, I realized that I had lost the little tiny dots that go on the top of the letter I in both the word hi and friend. I was like, okay, yeah, of course I'm going to lose those. They're super, like, they're almost like microscopic, right? <laughs> and these old eyes could not find them. So I was like, okay, well, it looks funny when it doesn't have a dot on the eyes. So I grabbed my Nouveau Drops in Ebony and just went ahead and made a couple little dots. Just go straight up and straight down and don't get too crazy. I like to uh, test it there on my scrap paper so in case it's got an air bubble, it just burps out onto the napkin and not onto my project. And there you can see the end result of this uh, different way of using the oxide sprays instead of spraying directly onto your paper. Hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching.